Good morning. Thank you for joining us at Union Street. Uh, we recognize this morning looks a little bit different. I am preaching just to two people in here this morning. Grateful that our uh, tech team is able to come. We apologize. We're a little bit later starting this morning. There's always some technical difficulties that usually happens. But we are grateful that we are able to be together this morning. And our prayer is that you will be able to experience God. You'll be able to hear his word this morning. Just join us as we listen to this song, God of Wonders.
Amen. Bless you, Lord. You are great, wonderful, holy, righteous. I love that line. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, hold me. Hold me. You are holy. Holy. You are holy. So This is our declaration this morning. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he has saved me from all my enemies. This morning, again, we want to welcome you to Union Street and thank you for allowing us to join in your homes. That as we recognize that um, we are, again, it seems like we're going back, backwards instead of going forward. But we have this assurance that God is in our midst, and we look to him for hope, that this passage in Psalms 18 reminds us that God is indeed our rock, our fortress. He has a power to save. So this morning, we are coming together, remembering that God is with us. He's with us here in the church, and he's with you in your homes. And we are grateful that we can experience worship, we can experience his word together. So let's bow our head in prayer before we go to his word. Dear Heavenly Father, we recognize that we are missing community that many people, God, are joining in their homes and, and uh, in their own household bubbles. And for many people, they're off work for a few weeks. For parents, it's juggling with homeschooling, with schooling and work. And for teachers, it is trying to how to teach both online and in person. And with our hospital staff, it is still continuing to juggle the weariness, the shortage of staff. And so, Lord, this morning, we look to you for strength, for wisdom, for the power, God, to be that light to be that hope and healing in our community. May we be attentive to your voice, to know who we need to reach out to, whether that's a phone call, a card, or dropping off a meal. May we thank you, God, that you have designed us for community, that we are not in this alone, that we are in this with you, God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and with each other. And we thank you that you give us strength. So God, we continue to look to you for strength, for wisdom, discernment, and the endurance to continue moving on. We lift up our government leaders, Lord. We ask that you would give them wisdom and discernment. That we recognize that they often don't have the greatest news to share. And what a heavy burden that is at times to be able to share it. And it reminds me, God, what great news that we have to share in Jesus Christ. 
So give us the courage, give us the boldness in this time, God, to be your light, to be your witnesses in this weary world. May we partner with you, God. We thank you again that you are in our midst. We thank you for the strength that you give. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Have you ever felt uncertain that you have more questions than answers and the answers that you did receive did not bring relief or assurance to what was going on i think in the last couple of years more people have been able to identify with the feelings of uncertainty like never before it doesn't matter your occupation or your economic status or your relationship status. We have all felt uncertain in these unprecedented days. Yes, it has affected people differently. Not everyone has experienced the same turmoil. But we can all agree that we have all faced uncertainty. A couple of weeks ago, in my quiet time, my thoughts were not able to focus. I closed my Bible as I was just reading words, not able to really listen or abide in God's word. And as I closed my eyes just to become still, I realized I was feeling uncertainty about many things. I don't normally journal, but I knew at this moment it would be very helpful to put some of my thoughts down on the paper to still my mind. On the top of my paper, I wrote how I was feeling tired, conflicted, and uncertain. And besides the word uncertain, I wrote down the things that I was uncertain about. And much to my surprise, the list wasn't that long. And then I wrote the things that I was absolutely certain about. I wrote down the love of God, his goodness, his faithfulness. I wrote down who I am in Christ, that I'm a chosen, beloved child. I wrote my husband's name down for his support and love. I wrote down prayer warriors, and I listed some names of people that I know pray for me on a regular basis for me and our church. And as I continued on going down that list, my perspective shifted. What I was certain about was a lot longer and was a lot larger than what I was uncertain about. It's amazing when that happens, when you shift your perspective. And what it basically I did, I recognized I was having this conversation with God. And I was able to shift my feelings onto what I knew to be sure. The facts. The facts of God's love and faithfulness. The fact that he is always there. I wrote down Isaiah 41, 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand hand. At that moment, having this conversation with God while journaling, that his presence gave me peace, gave me power. And what was uncertain simply seemed to erase away. As I sat there thinking, I thought about how we talked about last week, the importance of listening how God speaks and takes delight 
when we listen to his voice, when we're not only attentive, but we obey what he calls us to do. And the second part of listening to God's voice is talking to him. We call it prayer. Towards the end of the Old Testament, you find a short little book consisting of three chapters called Habakkuk. It's about the prophet Habakkuk and his conversation with God. Habakkuk can identify with uncertainty and hopelessness. What I love is how authentic and specific he is with God. Listen to the beginning of the book. How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen or cry out to you violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate the wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Basically, Habakkuk is saying, God, don't you see what is going on? Don't you care what is going on? Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? God, are you there? God, are you listening? Do you see what's going on? And if we are honest, I believe that we've all had those thoughts one time or another. That in you might be right there in this season of COVID-19, wondering, God, how long must we endure this? It's been two years. Where are you? Maybe it was when you were battling cancer or your loved one facing a serious illness or a prayer that you've been praying for a long time and it just seems to be bouncing off the ceiling, coming right back to you. This is how Habakkuk is feeling. And he courageously brings it all to God. He doesn't hide his disappointment, his concern, or anger. He surrenders it to God. He knows God is big enough to handle it. He doesn't wear a plastic smile and say everything is fine when life is not making sense. Habakkuk is real. He is not complaining and whining for the sake of being negative or drawing attention to himself. He is not posting on social media. He's taking it directly to God because he knows that God is holy and God could do something about it. He wonders why God seems to be ignoring the problem. You see, Habakkuk cried out to the Lord to judge the wickedness of Judah. And the response of God took him back when he learned that God was going to use the violent Babylons to correct and punish the Israelite people. And Habakkuk cried out again. In verse 12 and 13, he says, O Lord, a rock, you have sent these Babylonians to correct us and to punish us for our many sins. But you are pure and cannot stand the sight of evil. Will you wink at their treachery? Should you be silent while the wicked swallow up people more righteous than they? The prophet could not understand why God would choose to work the way he did. Yet, 
Habakkuk demonstrated the essence of true faith. He continued to trust God's wisdom and faithfulness no matter what happened or what God decided. Habakkuk penned an amazing response. He says in chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the field produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be, that is Habakkuk's declaration, I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Habakkuk is saying no matter what is going to happen, no matter what is happening right here and right now, God is going to give me the strength to endure it, and not just to endure it. He's going to give me joy, and I am going to be okay. Where did the prophet find such hope in the face of such terrible calamity? For one thing, he was strengthened by God's word. His expression of faith closely echoes the words of David uttered centuries before. In Psalms 18, we read these words, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. That's how we began the service this morning, making that our declaration. Habakkuk was not only in God's word, he spent a great time alone with God. In fact, the book bears his name and it's his record of his extended conversation with God. It's a conversation of his concerns, of God's ways and his plans. And while Habakkuk did not understand or particularly like what he heard from God, he acknowledged the fact that God's ways are the best, that he trusted the Lord for the future of Israel and for his own life, regardless of the circumstances. You see, the prophet knew that God was at work and would bring out good of what seemed to be horrendous circumstances. That is God's promise to us in Romans 8, 28, we read how he's always at work in our lives to bring out good in the darkest situations. Verse 28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. When the outcome is looks grim, we are to look up, that Jesus is your strength. When the circumstances are uncertain, Jesus is your consistency. When the future appears foreboding, Jesus reminds, remains our hope. The strength of Jesus is both unlimited and immeasurably, and is yours to receive. God delights in upholding the weary and strengthening the powerless. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 to 31, we read these words. Have you never heard? 
how you never understood. The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I understand that you may be weary right now. And at honest, I am weary too. And like you, my tank of emotional and physical energy seems very low. But by God's goodness and grace, his strength is overflowing and available to us all. That he invites us to come to him to bring our worries, our burdens, our questions, our uncertainties in exchange he will strengthen us and supply us with the power to carry on this bumpy, rough road that we're on. That's God's promise, and God always keeps his promises. Centuries later, as Jesus walked into Jerusalem, knowing that he would soon be crucified, like Habakkuk, he knew the Father's will and acknowledged that difficult events were coming and that he would have to endure. On earth, Jesus experienced life like we do. He was rejected, misunderstood, falsely accused, slandered, abandoned, and yet, he did not sin. In his humanity, like the prophet Habakkuk, he experienced a troubled heart. He knew he could be saved from that dark hour to come. But he also knew that the way of the cross was the reason he came into the world. John 12, 27, he says, Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Jesus lived by faith in certainty of his Father's love, and he fully relies on his Heavenly Father. Habakkuk's assurance does not rest in circumstances, but rather in this unshakable relationship with his covenant God. In the midst of all the questionings and dialogues, Habakkuk is certainty, certain of God's faithfulness and his sovereignty. He is strengthened because he trusts in God. And he's able to worship God in the middle of the chaos and confusion because he knows it's not the end. It is a nasty bump in the road, but he can cling to God for strength and joy in the journey. Friends, we are invited into this relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That we are not designed to do life on our own, but in community with him. That, like Habakkuk, we too are able to say, though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes in the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the field produces no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattles 
cattle in the stalls. Yet, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. I am choosing, I am choosing to trust in God. I will be joyful in God my Savior. And because of my choice, the Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Friends, I don't know how you're feeling today, but I encourage you that if you are feeling uncertain, that I encourage you to do what I did, to have this dialogue with God, to actually write it out, write it out what you're uncertain about, what you are afraid about, and then, once you do that, write another list and write what you are certain about. I have complete assurance that no matter what your list looks like, that when you are able to shift your perspective from your problems to God, to whatever your situation is right now, that you will be strengthened by looking in at the face of God. That you will be reassured of his love that he has for you, that he is with you and that he is for you and that he's fighting for you on your behalf. All we have to do is look at the cross and I encourage you in your own journey as you're writing this down to look at your past to see what God has brought you through. That we are able as a church to look back in the last two years and see everything that God has brought us through. That in fact, when we first started back in that pandemic in the early days, we didn't have much for an AV team or a sound or videos. We didn't even have any furniture in this place. And yet, through God's faithfulness, he has blessed us abundantly, more than we can ever imagine. That we have seen baptisms, that we have seen being able to partner in our community, spreading hope and healing through God's generosity. That we know that even when our doors have to be physically closed, God is on the move. That God desires to have this close, intimate relationship with you. One that he can remind you that he is your beloved, chosen child. So friends, this morning, or whatever it happens to be the time of day that you are watching this, I encourage you to dialogue with God, to be like Habakkuk, to be honest with how you're feeling, because God is big enough that he can handle all our disappointments. He can handle all our anger and frustration. And what he wants to exchange that for is that his peace and power that is found through Jesus Christ. Friends, I want you to know that even though our doors are closed right now, church is still going on, that if you would like to meet, we can have a phone call visitation, we can pray that we're still in community together. Remember that. Be certain of that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you how you invite us to have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, God, how we can authentically come to you with our problems, with our questions and frustrations, God, and you hear them. 
that you lovingly embrace us just how we are. And then you take that and you exchange it. You exchange our weakness for your strength. You exchange our hopelessness for your hope. You exchange our discontentment to your joy. We thank you, Father, that we can look to you for strength. And so as we are looking to you for strength, may we also be attentive to the needs of those who are around us. May we be the light that you have called us to be, that as we partner with you, may we be a beacon of hope and healing to our community. May we speak words of hope and encouragement. We thank you, God, and that we have this good news of Jesus Christ. That no matter what is going on, that we can always share this good news. So we thank you for your love and your faithfulness, and this is what we are short of. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. We're going to close with this familiar old hymn. It's called Leaning on the Everlasting Arms of Jesus. So again, as you, probably many of you will sing it, and as you're listening to it, to remember that is what we're called to do, not just today, but every day. And as we lean, we are strengthened. And we are strengthened to be able to support others. That is what God has called us to partner with him to doing. So God bless you as you worship this song together.